Welcome back to Reed Head Homestead. Today we're gonna to be doing something really fun. I am going to be making a dining table for my family. Um, as some of you may know, uh, my family is the Crazy Middles here on YouTube and they just moved into their new home and I'm so excited. My mom has put me in charge of decorating the house and you know, helping her with renovations and everything like that. And so they need a custom dining table. It kind of needs to be a weird size. And so I was searching all over for one, but was having no luck. So I just figured, hey, let's make one. So I have a really fun and easy DIY for you guys today that I'm excited to share. So let's get started. So here's where I'm at so far. I worked on these last night to get my pocket holes in all of these pieces of wood. And so I have these clamped because it's a little fun fact, guys, if you don't need to use your wood right away, clamp it overnight or anytime you leave it so that it doesn't warp. So that's what I have going on here. We got this table off of OfferUp and super inexpensive. And I just decided that we were gonna not use the top and build a new top and instead use the legs for the table. Hi, <laughs> I have a visitor. <laughs> so we um, are still gonna use these legs and just build a new top for them. And I'm gonna paint them white. We're gonna do the top kind of like a grayish brown. So I think it's gonna turn out really pretty. I'm excited to get it together today. I'm hoping I can get it done and uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's do it. Okay, here is what it's looking like. Oh my gosh, this thing has turned out huge. Um, so it came out to 115 inches. So it's just under 10 feet. So I'm excited to go ahead and get it stained. I did try a stain. Um, I'm trying a new, a new setup with stain this time, something I've never done before, but I tried this one out. This one was called Smoked Umber um, by Minwax, and I'm just, I wasn't crazy about it. It is pretty, but it just wasn't quite right. So let me show you guys my little setup of what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna first start with um, a pre-stained wood conditioner that's water-based, and then I am using this is Minwax water-based wood finish and semi-transparent and so this starts in a clear tint and then you can get it tinted to whatever shade you want they have obviously as you can see over 200 colors really exciting so I went with this one this one is called mocha I haven't used this color before but it looked really pretty and I think I'm gonna love it so we're gonna try that out I'm going to seal it with um, a polycrylic, I love polycrylic. This is a polycrylic in clear matte. So I'm excited to try all of this out. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna start with the wood conditioner. While that dries, I'm gonna prime the legs on the table. And then by the time I'm done with that, then hopefully I can get it stained and, you know, kind of go back and forth.
Okay, so I wanted to pop in and I wanted to share with you guys a mishap that happened to me. I had a staining crisis, okay? <laughs> oh man, you guys are gonna laugh because <sighs> let me tell you what, I had to take that whole table apart to get this staining process right. Um, so, you know, it was really unfortunate. I will show you guys some details in the next clip of where this went wrong, but I did want to pop in and tell you guys, you know, the mishaps because I am here to share my successes and my failures with you because not everything is going to go perfect all the time. You can plan, plan, plan for a project, do all your thinking for a project and things are still going to go wrong. And, um, you know, you just have to work through them and, and figure it out. So let me show you guys what happened. Okay, so here's the table. <laughs> and you guys are, here's the rest of it. You guys are probably asking yourselves, okay, why the last time we saw the table, it was together? Um, I got these primed yesterday. You guys saw that, I still have to paint them. Um, but what happened was when you get these boards together, so there's a couple different ways that you can do this, but I chose to leave, you know, when you buy wood, it kind of has a little bit of a rounded edge on it. And I chose to leave the rounded edge, um, A, because I don't have a planer, and I didn't really want to put all this through my table saw to cut the edges off. Other piece of it is that if I left everything together the way that it was, um, without taking the edges off, it was going to be the absolute perfect width that I needed to be. So. That's just too easy, so why would I go through all that extra effort um, to take that apart? Well, what was happening is when I tried to stain this, um, this stain, I couldn't get it all the way down perfectly into the cracks, of course, because it's together, so I couldn't get it down all the sides. And in some areas, you could see the regular wood color um, come through. So I thought it was super important for me to share this portion of the project because I have seen so many other people do the exact same thing. Get the whole tabletop together and then stain it. And you know, I think if you're working with a light stain, you might be able to get away with that. But with the dark stain, it was very visible that it just wasn't right. And there was little pieces that I couldn't get to. And I just felt like putting that table underneath the dining light, those mistakes were gonna be just magnified. So I definitely wasn't gonna settle for that and didn't want um, to put out that type of quality of work, right? You know, I strive to do better and better every single time I have a project. And so this one definitely had a little bit of a setback, but I learned such a valuable lesson from it. So I wanted to share that with you guys in case you are doing this project at home. Now I will know for next time. I also think I'm gonna go ahead and give myself the credit that I have now made two dining tables and not one, I have made two. <laughs> but you know what? The hard work always pays off in the end. Okay, so I did two coats of sealer. It is completely dry, so we are ready to get the table back together. Let's do it. Okay, here's what we're looking like. So we're getting ready to put the two legs on. I'm gonna add a support in the middle, just an extra board on the bottom, just to kinda secure everything a little bit better since the table is so big. So to do that, I have primed and painted a two by six. I'm gonna put some pocket holes underneath and then get them secured um, to the insides of the legs. So we are almost to the finish line. Can't wait to see it in the space.
Oh my gosh, it's done! Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. That's oh. so awesome. It fits this space perfectly. I'm so There's glad. There's no way that we could have bought a table that would fit this. Yeah. This, this space is it's perfect. I love it so much. I love it. Yay. Thank you so, so much, nice. Kylie. So it ended up seating 10 people, but technically you could put two on put each two end. Here, yeah. There, which is 14. 14 people that this table could fit. Yeah. That's huge. So pretty awesome. I love it. I'm so glad I could do this for you guys. Thank you. And Thank you. We'll, we'll enjoy it for years to Thank come, you. right? It's going to be so fun. So if you guys want to see the final reveal, we um, are going to have a rug coming this week. These are temporary chairs. We'll have our official chairs coming in a few days. So Where if you want to... the rug coming? Um, I think it'll be here on Thursday. So that's like four days from now. So just in a few days. Yeah, so right yeah. We just did like temporary chairs that I happen to just have. Like yeah. Little chairs, but at least we can use the table right away while we're waiting for the other chairs. Yes, absolutely. So if you guys want to check out the final reveal, check out my family's channel. They're the crazy middles and they will have the final, final situation, final setup on there for you guys. So woohoo.